go. Welcome to the PBO Sunset Power Rankings. Today we're here highlighting the league's second fiercest division, obviously. As the season heats up, uh, as going into week two, we are looking at seeing where people have rose, uh, uh, risen in the ranks or fall into the depths. I will be your host, Sunnyside Suicunes, otherwise known as uh, the Spooky Scary Muggyton, uh, and follow with the New York Melomars, otherwise known as Za. We're here going to rank some teams, see who made it to the top. <laughs> or who's got it all to drop. All right. Or who made it to the basement. Well, speaking about the basement, Baton Rouge uh, clearly was never let out. Uh, we haven't heard from him. So he unfortunately got an FF loss. I'm hoping he'll come back, maybe see some sunlight and, you know, rise to the ranks. But for the time being, we put him 14th. Uh, and I don't think we have much to talk about. He's a cool team. Yeah. Big man, come back. This team is not bad at all. Come back. I may hate I may hate the I may hate the Terrifier and Glaceon, but you know, I still want to see it work, you know, come on. Uh we can move on. Uh, and we have the Salt Lake Salandits. They also did not get the battle. We'll have uh, a few of those, not too many. Uh however, unlike um the basement dweller, the uh Cass had a genuine reason. You know, they weren't around. They couldn't play. So they have heft. So that's why they're a spot higher than, but, 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 you know, Basement Dweller. And Clombrook got a the forfeit win into the, the Boston Rogue Bay Guns. So, you know, they're at uh, 12th place. They didn't get to play. Uh, no fault of their own. Move on. You know, it's one of those teams. Yep, there we go. We've moved up to Bait, or otherwise known as uh, Snowpoint Temple Zoroas. What do you think about this uh, team and how they uh, played this week? Wait, I, th I think these. I think Snow Temple is higher, aren't they? Yes, I, I believe so. I don't think they're tenth. It should be uh, Tottenham. Yes. There okay. we go. So Tottenham brought some weird sets, essentially. Uh, no, We'll never know if there was explosion on the... Uh, uh, that video hasn't come out yet, ladies and gentlemen. Be on the lookout for the Tottenham video with explosion bronze on. But there were some strange choices. Um, I think they were going for setup with the Latias. It just never came, quite came to fruition. I believe they were running Trick, Light Screen, Reflect, Bronze on without revealing the other move. But we never saw any setup to benefit from that. And they were kind of just on the back foot the entire game. Like, they never really had any meaningful chance to win the game. And most of the sets seemed suboptimal, but not in a way that even caught the opponent off guard, seemingly, in any way. Um, and then they got the old counter Claude Sire conk to the head. So, I think that's why we put him down here. Yeah, uh, there's not a whole lot. So, a lot of these teams, it's nothing that we're bad mouthing these people individually. It's just much more of a... Uh... Suboptimal sets, because some people, some of these players, like, and as we'll get into it, they didn't necess they necessarily didn't play poorly, but their prep was lacking in some areas, and that kind of showed in Hoot Hoot's uh, case. I believe that um, the prep wasn't all there, allowing Sierra Cruz to, or not Sierra Cruz, Cherry Hill to uh, take advantage uh, and just kind of steamroll the game in a just a nice stable manner. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm looking at the uh, the Latias. I'm gonna guess. You know, we had agility, but we had no way to boost the special attack. I don't think the item was ever revealed. We'll assume it was weakness policy. I don't know what they were trying to get hit with to prop the weakness policy. Whether it was like knock off or something from the ogre pawn, but it's more just like the sets. We also didn't see a ton of the sets from Trainer Black. Although I will say, even though he's down here. If he had hit some sleep powders, it would have been a different game, but that's what happens when you Still rely on sleep powder. So, what can you do? Yeah. I think that's enough for this one. Yeah, we're moving on up. It should be Geo. Geo. All right, we got the Scarbo Sceptiles. Um, I think that once again, this was just a prep mismatch. Um, I think even though it was a 5-0 loss to or uh, to Nico, I think that game could have been much closer if it was, or even just a win on Geo's side if that was a Scarf Specterior. And 
it was not, which is really unfortunate. And then Geo just had some interesting decision making for prep. I mean, yeah, you know, Zap Can and Zapdos, of course. Like even if that was just normal Thunderbolt, that would still like fix a lot of his differential issues. Uh, yeah, it was just interesting decision making from uh, Geo. I'm hoping for a rebound. It was a lot closer. A couple of these five O's, as Mug just mentioned, are closer than they looked. Like the sleep powder thing we just talked about in the last game. This one, there were some times when Geo switched out. When I, I still don't know. I'm assuming it was Scarf Miensha, where I feel like he just should have kept attacking. Yep. Uh, maybe he was scouting for stuff. Like he didn't know it wasn't. I still think it was Specs Tornadus based on the damage it did to Ting Lu. And he should have, if he didn't look that up, he probably should have. They were playing very fast. He might have just assumed that it was faster. But if he had just kept high jump kicking, even like he switched out on a, what's it called? The uh, gouging fire once when he still should have been faster yep. and he could have kicked it and killed it. Yep. So it was just some strange in-game choices that led to it being way, like, way spaced out more than it should have been. Um, and then as Mug mentioned, probably one or... Either Spark, Scarf Dragapult or Scarf Spectre really would have changed the game a little bit. And the Zap Cannon thing is funny, but I don't think it would have killed the Gouging Fire regardless. So not that particular turn. Obviously, you shouldn't run Zap Cannon, but it could have been that's Hurricane. Thing, so whatever. Yeah, Hur Hurricane was weird. Like, I think it, in the video I said early in the game, like, guys, when you play Zapdos, I know nobody wants to miss the Hurricane. Just click it when you know they're going to switch the ground type yep. in. Just click yep. it and then you turn out. Like, it's it, yep. it the odds are in your favor in the long run. But um, other than that, yeah, it was closer than it looked, but it was just some strange choices, so we had to put my man down here. Yep. Um, yeah, that's all there was. It was just some interesting de Geo decisions that I definitely think they can be very easy to be rebound, like, you know, back. Also, fighting Nico, a veteran player. Uh, I mean, I don't know how much of PBO knows this, but, I mean, him and Orange faced off, at, like, back in 2020, 2019, during the COVID they fought way before PBO was even around. So, you know, Nico's, Nico is a veteran when it comes to these draft leagues. So the fact that Geo could have won, even though it looks like a big sweep, uh, is impressive. Now All he just needed to do was fix winners. him up his Yep, now we're moving into some winners. Yep. So we move on to the New York Nickets. Um, it was a loss to Kuma, the Tokyo Teddy Ursus. Um, I, if I remember correctly, I'm not the biggest fan of this team, but it does have some things going for it. I mean, it is DOSB, Golden Go, Garchomp. Those three are, you know, absolutely in a harmonious relationship. Um, nothing that I believe anything, nothing Caleb did in the game that was weird. Um, I watched it a few times over. I think, again, it was just prep, per se, and letting things take chip when they didn't need to. And then other than that, it was just, yeah, it was mostly just a prep thing. Like, you want your Golden Go to absorb, like, uh, hazard removal, and yet you're also trying to make it your setup. You're trying to, like, double up all in the utility, because, like, Shadow Ball and then T-Wave. But then all the damage, all the knockoff, all that is very permanent. So your hazard protection is on a timer. And then also you have very one-dimensional threats from there on forward. And I think that was more of a prep issue, more so than a, a um, play problem. Yeah, there was some... The, the main issue that I saw that, with what they brought was having no way to hit the Terrapagos with the Golden Go was a death sentence. From it was always as soon as I saw the set, once the set was revealed, uh, even when it had three moves, I'm like, they don't have focus blast on this, do they? And I knew in the middle of the game, watching, like, they're going to get set up on by Terrapagos and it's going to win or just put them in such a bad position that they can't recover. And that's essentially what happened. I think, Nick, it's if you've never used Golden Go before, I think you should get it out of your mind that it's just support. It's bulky offense or like use it offensively. It's not just to protect hazards, it's way, way better than that. And I think when people first have this, or Ape also, they fall into the trap of, it's just to protect my hazards. It's not. It's a devastating offensive tool. Absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, also, also as Mug mentioned, I think Superior would have been really good in this game. I think he got a little bit concerned that one thing, which off the top of my head I can't remember, just walled it. 
Because if only one thing walls something, that means if you chip that one thing, that's all it takes to win the whole game. So one check is not a reason not to bring a, a superior, which also sub leeched really annoying set, particularly against six tokens weaknesses. Generally, he hates speed, so his teams are really slow. So you have slow leech seed against a team like that, it's going to will down the whole team, um, right? And not only um, that, like, if you wanted to spread the paralysis, I mean, Glare is sitting right there. Like, yeah. and that would been, be really strong. I'll also freeing up Golden Go to, you know, if you still really wanted to go the utility Golden Go, it frees up a slot to go recover or Focus Blast or something of the manners to give it some kind of um, versatility rather than just hope that there's no turtle in front of you. Yeah. I still like this team though. I think it was I'm, just it was it was a it was a weird well, build. It made the team look much worse than it was. But between speed go and golden go, golden go is a crazy dude, Nickus. Don't think that it's because of what happened in week one. It's not good. This guy is crazy. You just got to figure out the right set for the right week. Yeah, this is not my most hated team, and I definitely think you have like a really good core of like five, six, maybe six and a half Pokemon. So I think that's really important to move forward. You just need to know like how to prep and use these Pokemon because right now your team is, if you bring hazards and if you want to try to hazard control into me, you're going to lose the game. So you want to ensure that your Pokemon can not only set up and like obviously use the hazards, but you want to abuse them. That 16% matters. If you're doing the, that chip, you want to make sure that your your damage ranges are accounting for that. So because you have Pokemon like Garchomp and Dio Speed, don't just use them to set up hazards because you have, you know, you don't need to double up on that kind of stuff. You can use it to like truly de do just some devastating damage. And I think, um, yeah, I, your team definitely ha is like a really good synergy. Like your team is very synergistic. Okay, here we go. Uh, yes. Uh, Toronto Star Raptors it got a forfeit win off of the um, Salt Lake Salandits due to them not being around uh, or not being able to play for uh, reasons. So all they did was swap up their team. So they dropped Primarina and Dragalge for uh, Lola Ninetales Quillfish. Quillfish is a good Pokemon. Intimidate, flip turn, poison type, no complaints. And then Alolan Ninetales, um, I think it's individually or in a vacuum, Primarina um, to Nine Alolan Ninetales. Like these trades in individually are downgrades, but then when you look at the team holistically, I do like the idea you're going for with not Alolan Ninetales because you set up screens. It's not only for the Excalibur, who absolutely loves it. A lot of your other Pokemon are pretty happy with it, like PZ, Sinistra, Great Tusk, obviously, and even Raikou. Like is pretty happy with it. Um, I'm just concerned that your team is now a bit more wide, one-dimensional. So obviously your team has higher highs than before and lower lows. Yeah, I mean it helps the speed a little bit because if they yep. didn't have this Alola Nine Tails, this was an extreme. It still is, but it was an extremely slow team. Yep. Um, I agree. I, I think Primarine is even underrated where we have it. Like it's significantly better than Nine Tails. But obviously they have big Excalibur, so I get it. Just yep. don't get locked into always being Veil. Like, this yep. thing can do offense, too. Like, don't bring the same yep. set every week. Specs is good. Scarf is I good. Ironberry's bits. The nasty Plot is good. Like, it can actually yep. do things. So just use it for something that's not just the basic thing. Also, yep. just while I'm looking at this, if you're going to have a screens team, maybe you try to move this. I, I like Terra Porygon, but... On to this, I'd be interested to see it on this Oracorio, because if they don't know what type you're bringing, plus Terra also, uh, behind the screens, it it could do things. Oracorio is not a joke. It can do things. Yep. Just just something to think about. Or Sinister also, since it's just sitting there. But... Next up, okay, we finally, we, we, we have uh, um, teased um, Snowpoint Temple uh, <laughs> Zoro's uh, old, uh, video long. Um, the Legends. Yes. They got a win off of the uh, Syracuse Snorlaxes. Um, I believe it was Iron... No, it was Petrant Weakness Policy. Uh, swoop in the end. Um, it was a really good call because I think up until that point, they were looking a bit on the back foot. Um, but, you know, they, they sh uh, came up. I want to clarify something that I said right as I was leaving last video. Um, 
this my hatred for this team is literally has nothing to do with the individual it had was all to do with i just hate that looking at this team um uh, a lot of i do believe we made some changes so i believe zora toxic croak and mimikyu are all gone and it was in, in exchange for now this is for next week so for week three but i do feel like it's worth talking about if i'm going to uh, mention his uh Team, I uh, need to find the right channel. Yes, uh, he's going to, for next week. It'll be Gramble Trachyon. I'm not even sure if that makes me like this team, but uh, my hatred for this team aside has nothing to do with the person. I'm sure he's going to do amazing things with it. I mean, he already won with it, so he clearly knows uh, what he can do. I just think it is a five and a half mon roster, and that's not what you want to be running uh, into the. Uh, into the gauntlet. But it was an impressive win. Oh, nonetheless, it was a good call with the Petrant. You, you know, play to your win con. That's something that a lot of players can struggle with. They can build a win con, but they don't know how to, like, get yourself into that position. And even though that you are not on, you, you were a bit on the back foot, you were still said, no, nope, I know what my win condition is. I know how to win. <coughs> and you move forward and you got Petrant into the position and you won the game. So, you know what? That is kudos to you. And, you know, that really does speak volumes to the, like, the confidence or the level of player that you are. Yeah, when you watch a game like this, uh, ladies and gentlemen, something you can see that if you have something that you know can win with minimal chip, you don't care what else happens for the rest of the game. Like, we had a game happen mm -hmm. uh, last night or the day before where the player knew, okay, I get Terrapagos in once this a AV is off iron hands, I win. So nothing that happened previously makes any difference. So he knew, looking at the opponent's team, okay, they can't really hit Petrant with anything except non-stab moves. And even, like, stab Earthquake off Swampert unless they're going to run special, which they probably should have. Um, you know, that's going to do minimal damage to me. So this is a prime weakness policy game. I have the advantage that the best special wall in the game, they have it Glow King, but it can't really handle my Petrant that well or hurt me in any meaningful way. So this is what I'm going to go with. And it got set up and it won. Like, they, yep. they, it looked like they were Spadef. The Kiram Earth Power didn't do that much damage to them. Uh, so that that might have honestly been what it was set up for, was to come in after that was locked in on score for something. But, or to take the knockoff from the Tornadus uh, Therion, mm -hmm. right? So it was a perfectly reasonable thing. You got the chip that you needed, and it looked like a good uh, game plan to me. I don't dislike this team as much as, as uh, Mug seems to. Like, it, it, it lacks, like, sexiness. Definitely, but Ogre Pond is pretty good. Terra Jolteon is pretty good. Ditto's funny. It does warp team building just because, like, you don't want to just lose the game yourself by setting up and losing to a Ditto. Um, Iron Leaves, I know somebody else also got a sweep with Iron Leaves, and I said, I don't know what Iron Leaves does. I still stand by that. I still don't think Iron Leaves is good. Um, but I think it's I think it's a solid team. You just got to be a little bit more creative with this, but hey, it just looks like they can, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm excited to be proven wrong. I just, you know, five and a half man rosters are, you know, a bit exploitable is my biggest concern. Now we have Manila. Uh, we had quite the drop. I believe it was second overall last week, um, if my memory serves me correctly. Yes. And then... They're down here at... I don't even know anymore. This is um, five, I believe. Fifth? Perfect. Yes. Um, let me pull up their game on my side. And Manila is faced off against Don. Tokens. Tokens. Yeah. Oh, no, it was Don. My, it was yeah, Don. It was my bad. Don. Yes, this was a game where I found that they didn't necessarily uh, make any... Um, yeah, they didn't have any draft uh, prep issues. So this was a different uh, kind of thing where like their their sets were like standardized. There was they were playing decently well. I think their loss had more to do with Don winning than them like fumbling the bag. Um, I mean, I think if anything that can be said about their prep is that they 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 um, did not respect the uh, decidui as much as they could have, um, or you know because I mean. As far as Don was concerned, Don really didn't click a lot of moves, um, you know, to win. Like we, like if you hover over 
on the end game. Not not a lot of Dawn sets were actually even exposed, but then you look at uh, Manila, you know, every Pokemon has at least two moves exposed. And so that really goes to show that, you know, Manila was really trying and, you know, there was a lot of fight, both were ha fighting over hazards, hazards were getting, you know, dealt with and whatnot. But when it came down to it, I think Manila not bringing any hazard removal, having to also had to sit with the hazards, it really made the, I think, 1v1 in any capacity worse, because if you found yourself in a worse tempo position, you would always have to then now take 24% damage because of hazards, and then you're not going to be in a good position the next turn, and I think it was 29 turns for Dawn to win. Again, I don't think this is the reason Manila is still up here so high. I don't know, I don't really think it's much of a Manila issue, it's more of a Dawn winning. I mean, yeah, there's some prep he could have done, there's this he could have done, but like, instead of like, like talking about the failures, I mean, I think the fact that, you know, he was being able to make this game competitive, the way he was able to operate his team, he had a plan, you know, I'm just, my biggest concern is not bringing any, either of your hazard removal. And they're, they're actually, like, Dawn Fan is a good hazard, you know, you're happy to put spin on this, Glamour Memorial spin is fine, right, like... Uh, I, I just wonder, instead of like Registeel or something like that, you could have brought, say, Dawnfan. Um, obviously, it's hard to say, but um, yeah, that's my biggest concern. It's just, it, if there was any prep issues, it was just not necessarily preparing for hazards. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of, first of all, like, this is up this high because the talent level of the team is so high, right? So there's yep. a reason why it was two off the jump. Um... There was a couple of, like, say, turn one, right? Lando against uh, Meows Karata. You kind of always, you have two things here, right? If you're not Scarf Meows Karata, first of all, you should probably just switch out. Because you don't want to get U-turned on turn one and die. So they stayed in. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that it was Scarf here. But then also just U-turn here because they're not going to stay in on Triple Axel. So it's it's plays like that. They're behind, they're, they were behind Don one turn the entire game. Right, so Don was playing one turn ahead of them, yep. just out predicting them. The only thing with the prep, I'll say, is so here we had, it looks like Mo Memento into Serilege, but we're not weak armor Serilege. That's a little strange. Um, yeah. Also, if we were going to run this and you see they have double Intimidate, I get, okay, we didn't bring hazard removal, so we're not going to, so we're boots. Okay, cool. But you really need to be clear amulet if you're going to be set up. Like, if you're going to run this set at all against... And he's bringing Lando High, and he's definitely bringing Overquill against you. Yep. So, I think you needed clear amulet and weak armor, and you would have swept. This I'm watching... I just w quickly went through the game. If you were weak armor there, you probably sweep with clear amulet. So, um, that's the only thing I would say, is that if you're bringing SD... You should almost always be weak armor. If you're gonna run the, if you're gonna run flash fire, then run bulk up. But you need the speed, or else you're still giving up, you know, one hit KOs to a numerous amounts of attacks. Yep. Um, other than that, yeah, it was it was mainly just uh, once you got behind the eight ball like that, Manila, and he was ahead of you. You need to make you needed to make a more aggressive play to retake momentum, like a hard switch. But you were too, you were behind him, like one turn behind him since turn yep. one. And that was essentially uh, what happened. So just, out. just you just got to rebound from it next week. You got the talent to do it. Really master these Sarah Ledge Terra things because, like, I don't know that you need Grass and Bug. One, yeah. those are the same type essentially. So you need Fairy. Take away one of those and be Fairy. Yep. Um, and this this thing should get you fifteen kills this season. Sarah yeah. Ledge, easy. Fairy, easy. Uh, Fairy Fire is a really strong offensive core. I don't. Yeah, I absolutely don't think you need both Bug and Grass. I think yeah, they're the same type, fine. Man. Yeah, they're the same yeah. type. Grass and bug for what you're trying to do for this. Um, it's the same thing, essentially. I think Don and I talked about it uh, going to last week. I believe you were second. Uh, I believe that we were going to put you higher than Kuma in power rankings, but we couldn't in good faith because of your terror typings on Sarah Ledge. So that if I had any like really good criticism, look into trying to change Bug into Fairy or anything of that sort because... That is like that is your weak point because your win condition of a lot of these games is going to be Sarah Ledge just absolutely yeah. just smacking the crap out of people. And it is really it is really put behind a bars with this grass bug because you're forced to now do flash fire every game because yeah. weak armor is nowhere near as good on bug or grass you want. Yeah. 
you know, the I'm okay with keeping grass, one. Yeah, the bug in the grass, Manila, it doesn't change the prep for the opponent. It's damn near yep. the same type. It yep. has almost the same weaknesses. Um, other thing else, just I, I don't have the points in front of me. If you can switch the Terra from Reggie Steel to Vikavolt, I'd also do that. That just seems much better to me. Yep, absolutely. Yes, Vic, Vikavolt is such a real is a genuine good Terra Captain. Also, like either putting it as Ghost or even even having one of its types just be Stab Electric is so yeah, nice. Electric. Levitate, yeah. yeah. Even just Electric is crazy. Electric yep. Fairy, all kinds of good stuff. Okay, big winners coming up. Big winners. Yep. Fourth, we got the Cherry Hill Bell Sprouts. Um, this was a pretty good win into Tot Tottenham. Um, if I remember correctly, there was yeah, there's no yeah, thing like bringing out the common. Snarl on the Raging Bolt, like you know, bringing out some really cool tech. Um, yeah, even not afraid to bring in the Rhydon, Para Flying, really good, and then Counter Claude Sire, like you know. Kudos to Bellsprouts. Like, yeah, you really brought what you felt like your team needed, and you didn't fall into a trap of like, okay, Chandler is such a good Terra Captain or whatever. I have to bring it every single game. Nope, you knew what to bring. You weren't afraid to, you know, prep accordingly. And, you know, you didn't bring Iron Valley. Oh, no, you did, but you, uh, that's right. It just never hit the field. Um, Corviknight didn't come. Like, I think to me, like, this was really well prepped. This, this is a team that prepped well. You knew what to bring, you knew what to play, and then it was 30 turns of, honestly, pretty well play. I mean, Tottenham tried his best to fight back, but um, even with screens, even with his own, like, um, ideas of, like, sleep powder and whatnot, but just it just didn't work out. Cherry Hill just came out on top. Yeah, for the most part, we, play, we played uh, quite well. I think this team, it was a little bit low, I thought... 10 just based on the talent of like the of three guys just see just the combination of bolt and valiant is crazy. those two guys are so good like you see those guys in the building like how do i beat this even if the, the other four guys could be us three and like pikachu and they'd probably still win some games mm -hmm. um slowbro i think is underrated i'm until i watched this game i didn't rem i didn't know slowbro still had scald that's kind of crazy did he hack yep. that in or does it always have scald no it has scald it's uh actually it's a it's a Pokemon that I it's always on my radar because the idea of having both Scald and T Wave and Slack off and then Flamethrower and all the coverage that Slowbro gets it's like it's a really good Pokemon obviously with Regenerator yeah. too. Yeah, that seems pretty good. I'm a, I'm also a fan of Ogre Pond C. I think that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will say, so Cherry Hill and the, like you should have you should have uh, had safety goggles on the Claude Sire just to beat their Terror Captain because you would have lost this game if he had hit the Sleep Powder. Yep. And that's a pretty, like, normal set. And, like, Black Sludge is a fine item. I'm not saying not to run it, but you didn't need it. Whereas you could have hard destroyed this uh, any, no matter what he was bringing, you could have stopped that setup. And besides that, you didn't have any real way to stop the sleepy time setup so that that might be just something to look ahead with is that if you know somebody's gonna bring like a setup set like that especially if you know there's an amoongus or something i like to bring something that just stops sleep so we get so many free turns out of that and then they just have a useless guy on their team so that's the only thing i'd say in the future if you see if you see something that's going to come against you because that was decent against your team especially i don't know if it terra fairy against corvanite is a little bit weird but i guess he was just thinking he was going to sleep everything Yep. But, um, yep. yeah, it was a good game, and I like the team a little bit more than where Don seemed to place it last week, just because I, I really think Bolt and Valiant are... Re Everybody thinks Valiant's good. But I really think the combination of Valiant and Bolt is pretty tough to deal with. Um, and Slowbro with Scold, who knew? It's a, that's a big... <laughs> that's a scary dude right there. Yep. Yeah, that, that's... Up. I mean, that's all we got to say. We're going up. Ah, Nico, Orlando Magic. The carp. the carp is here. This is a very uh, slow team, but it has a lot of bulk. Your Pokemon have no issues running, having speed, right? Like, none of its Pokemon are naturally speed, and that is a concern. However, you have a lot of Pokemon that have no issues running um, Scarf, no issues either setting up their speed, or Pokemon that are just so naturally bulky that their speed doesn't matter. Like, the speed tiers are irrelevant. And with what Nico did with his point threshold, I mean, really goes to show against a Geo. 
I mean, Geo had Ting Lu, Darkrai, uh, Dragapult, and it, they felt like they were just middle of the pack, like flimsy Pokemon. You I mean you look Ting, you made Ting Lu uh, look paper thin, right? Like, so I feel like Nico really was in the wheelhouse and knows what he's doing with this team. Yeah, I mean, like when I see this, I'm I'm gonna. Everybody knows I keep it a hundred. This I don't not like this team, but this guy is really good. So if this was a draft ranking, like I know why it was where it was post draft. I know like what you guys were thinking when you put this where it was. Uh, it's a little mismatched for me, but he's gonna make it work. Um, I it, if, any Terra Rotom I think is pretty good. Yep. Just yep. just pure. Just make it electric and it's good to go. Um, I Toad Scroll. Not particularly a fan of Toad Scroll, Damn. but it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be easy for them to set up the gouging fire on this team there's a lot of pressure so the things gouging fire pressures uh, or the things like some of the things you want to bring against gouging fire scissor helps a lot with that um you could see this week geo did not pay the garganical tax and you see why you must pay the tax yep. because Absolutely. then you start on this just this carousel of getting slapped in the face by salt cure which stays forever um, respect the tax, ladies and gentlemen. I said this last season with Nico. He was running Amoongus every week and was just sporing everyone. And there were the first three weeks with the, with the, like, power ranks. I was like, guys, stop letting him just spore you every week. Bring a safety goggles thing. So I'm going to say it here. Bring Cover Cloak. Don't let him just keep salt carrying all your guys. Um, but, and I mentioned the Stargazer and the Neon one. Any competent player with Slow King is going to win games. It's so yep. easy to use. He can keep bringing in Scizor, he U-turns back into Slow King over and over again, brings things down for the Gouging Fire, has spikes set up by the Hisuian Samurai, and we kind of saw that in this week. This was another one of most of the 5-0 games. I think it was a little deceptive, because I think Geo ran some weird sets and also just made some a uh, little bit suboptimal plays, so it would have been closer. Yep. But um, yeah, you got to have this this man up here, is a, he's a threat to the championship. He's a threat. Yeah. I'm not the biggest like I'm not the biggest fan of draft like if it, like if that's why when we do the preseason power rankings we take, turn off name plates and we just rank based off what we see as the team. Yeah. But now yeah, we're going. Like, I, I agree. The, the team. I don't think the team's that good, but he could no. win. He could yes. win for sure. Yes. And now that we're into it, now we start taking player strength into consideration. Now we see what the games are being played as, and Nico is now showing his worth and like his confidence in this team. There's some some you know cracks you know that, that can definitely be abused, but we'll we'll definitely see how that uh, turns out against Kuma, which uh, you know is coming up. Oh, it's a big six tokens. You better bring Covert Cloak, or you're you're going to <laughs> detention. You're going to detention, big man. Yep. Next, uh, for the second power ranking, we have Charleston Chestnuts uh, in number two, taking a win over Manila Manectrix. So, I mean, these were two high-ranked players, and Don taking the win. I mean, it was just sound play. I think Don just played really, really well. Again, it was nothing necessarily that, um, that uh, Manila really did wrong. It was just Don had his number and just played really well, did his team, like, had, like, just played his team very, very well nothing crazy it was just standard good ass play yeah this was this was good i watched the only the only thing i'll say and again this was me skimming the game don when you you turned into that sarah ledge that could have been bad yeah that could have ended bad if that was weak armor like maybe he was he was really banking on the uh intimidates to hold him over but that was i think that was an unnecessary risk uh, because we knew both Terra types, so you were never going to hit it with the U-turn effect. Because he, he was going to be bug, right? Like they, yeah. he, So he was never going to hit it with the U-turn super effectively. So that's the only thing when I was skimming through the game. Like, this could have been a turning point that could have been unfortunate, that would have made it closer. I don't know that he would have won. Um, but other than that, yeah, pretty, pretty dominant. And we don't know what Moon was. Um, Moon, just, just because I didn't talk about a lot of these teams, it's quite a good team. Like Moon is, Moon is extremely underrated. Knockout, knockoff is so strong, and this thing we saw it in a neon game can just win for no reason, really whatsoever, just out of nowhere. Um, and I think Tauros is a good secondary captain. I, I like, and I, every, I'm a big, the biggest cryogonal stan in the PBO. I love the cryo pick. Um, but yeah, solid stuff from Don. Title contender. Don is title or bust. If Don doesn't win, it's a failure, in my opinion. <laughs> 
Fair enough. But he has one contention currently in the, in the number one ranking uh, that we have currently. But, you know, obviously, things can change week to week, and that is the Tokyo Teddy Ursas. Unchanged from last week, got a 5-0 win against the Nickets. It looked just like this is a rude story. It looked very confident from Kuma. Nothing no, nothing crazy. Once again, just standard play. Uh, concerned about Kuma, uh, not Kuma, Caleb's golden go. Uh, uh, right on Kuma, by the way, to just know, like, hey, you can't hit me. I'm going to click on my paralysis be damned. I'm going to just set up in your face, and you're going to have to cope. I mean, other than that, knock off Polyrath for some support and utility. The, I, a good choice of Protect Toxic Spikes with the Earthquake with Gliscor. Obviously, as a road just stole the show. And then Fizzendipity and Metagross never saw the light of day. So, like, I... I, I th- I think that really goes to show that Kuma's in his wheelhouse. Kuma has his team, and he's just he's having a good time. Yeah, I think this was definitely the most dominant win. Uh, but we come around to the fact that Terrapagos is crazy. Yep. Like, it should probably be up 30 points from where it is. Like, it's a top five pick at this point. And he's paired that with the sec, if, if not the best, the second best hair captain in the league with the king of the jungle. Uh, we didn't even see Metagross. Metagross is a crazy Pokemon. Uh, I mentioned before that my man here hates speed, so he's only got one guy over what 105. Um, and Cinderace yeah, doesn't really. He's, he's thunderous and Cinderace. Yeah, it's thunderous. Yeah, okay. And but it, neither one of these guys really wants to scarf because they're both weak to rocks. They can, yep. but they don't really want to. Um, but you know, it's nitpicking. It's got it's got good bulk. It's just a very solid team. This is another one like. There's not much to say about the game because, like, Caleb Nickets brought some weird sets. Although he definitely could have won the game with some other sets, but he brought some weird sets, like, and he just let the Terrapagos set up. That's yeah. not going to happen every week, so we got to see what happens when the Terrapagos gets knocked or doesn't just get to set up. But um, this is another one along with Don. Like, if if Tokens doesn't at least make the championship, uh, it's a failure season from the Teddy Urses. So we got to see it for next week. We got to see Kuma it. Versus versus Nico is going to be a hell, hype as hell battle. Mug, who you got, Nico or Togans? I, I have to, I have to back my boy Kuma. Like I, I think like Kuma got this because not only just Rude as a good Terra Captain, but he also has Miss Magius, right? Which that's that's also just a standard ass good Terra Captain. I think uh, I don't know how well the matchup of cells pairs up, but I would call them pretty equal in skill. Like if we're talking about purely power level of player. Uh, not draft. I'd say they're both about equal. I think they're both star guy gazer level or like ready to yeah. be star gazer. So I'm gonna, th- I'm gonna throw some advice out tokens. You let this guy score get low, great uh, gouge and fire sweep in you easy. Yep, easy sweep for gouge and fire. So, so Nico, you got to take down this guy score ASAP. I'm going with uh, tokens also. My finals pick because I didn't get to pick on the first power rankings. Uh, uh, my finals is Geo uh, Sceptiles against Teddy Ursus. Final. That's my final. Interesting, interesting. I, I had to go halfway through. My mine would probably be, honestly, my finals might depending on how the bracket looks. Obviously, I mine is Kuma versus Nico. I think that one of those two is definitely. If they don't both make it to uh, finals, I think one of them wins because Don could also go to finals, right? Like one of those three is definitely going to show up. Um, at least one of them has to make finals, unless some crazy upset happens, which, you know, which is what the PBO, PBO is known for. Um, yeah, like, I, I think this is going to be uh, very exciting. Uh, I think Week 2 still has some very hyped games, and I'm excited to where it all uh, points out. Uh, I know Kuma doesn't like the stress of, like, people rooting for him, or like, hey, this is, you know, important, but I want you to know all eyes are looking at you in this battle because, you know, both of you and Nico are coming off wins, dominant wins, too, on top of that. So, I... Yeah, we're all counting on you. Don't let us down. Yeah, you you were fighting the boss battle early on. Is that all we got? I believe so. I, um, not, nothing crazy. I hope everyone has a happy Halloween. Um, this is the week two power rankings for Sunset. Thank you, Zah, for joining me and giving a, us all your insight. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Sweet dreams. 